got it. Fly Lady's mashed potatoes. And you get to make them ahead of time. We're going to use heavy cream. We're going to use cream cheese and sour cream and a stick of butter. And then my favorite tool is the ricer. A friend gave me this ricer when she was decluttering after 27 years and moving up here. So we're going to get started. Now I had to get two bags of potatoes to get enough potatoes to do what I wanted to do. And I scrubbed them really well before I started because potatoes are dirty. Don't use the big ones. Don't use the little ones. You want them all about the same size, a little bit smaller than your fist. I needed about 20 that were just the right size. And I, I scrubbed them really good. Clean out your sink when you're through because you always need a sink. Cover them with water. And this is my big pasta pot. You're going to cook on high for about an hour. So while, while the potatoes are cooking, you can clean up your mess from scrubbing them. And then after an hour, set your timer, you can poke a knife in to test them to see if they're done. Now the ones on top might have some hard places and you may have to cut those out when you're peeling them, but they won't be much. And just fill your sink with some cold water. This is gonna help in the peeling process. Plus it's gonna help cool them down a little bit so you can handle them. You can't handle hot potatoes. So be careful when you're dumping the potatoes. I always only had one hand going and the steam kind of got me, as you can tell. <laughs> so be careful. That was hot. Now, let those cool. And while those are in your sink full of cold water, we're going to start making the good part of these mashed potatoes. Because you don't want to beat your potatoes too much. So just let them cool. And then we're going to go over to our mixer. And we're going to add our softened cream cheese to our big mixing bowl. Use the largest mixing bowl you've got. We're going to cream together the butter, the sour cream, the cream cheese. And we're going to add some cream to it. And we're just going to get it all whipped up. I spend a, a long time making this. Well, it's not a long time. It's two or three minutes of beating it and letting it do it, its thing. Because beating this keeps you from overbeating your potatoes, which causes your potatoes to get all waxy. Now, I forgot to tell you, I use white potatoes for my mashed potatoes. White potatoes are flaky and they do a great job. If you want to make potato salad, use red potatoes. But we're making mashed potatoes. So keep beating this mixture and then we're going to take it and put it into another bowl because we're going to start ricing our potatoes. We're just going to pour that out into the other bowl and set it aside. And since we're going to put this back in the potatoes, we don't have to wash this bowl. We're just going to start ricing the potatoes into the bowl. We just dumped the butter sour cream mixture and cream cheese mixture and you know into so just keep 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 it going and now we're going to start ricing potato well we got to peel them first so peeling is easy and i just like to take my potatoes and just peel one at a time and i actually practically peel them all in front of you in less than in three minutes but i just kept doing it and you can listen to something on your on your on your phone and just stay focused and do one at a time and i like to like to have these potatoes in their jackets while they're cooking because it holds the vitamins and minerals in the potato not that i get to eat potatoes very often but it still helps me to make me feel better about serving potatoes that hadn't been boiled to death unlike my green beans which i like to cook them to death so folks just keep peeling the potatoes and eventually you'll get them all done i wish i could fast forward to it but my little movie maker thing wouldn't allow me to do that so i'm just going to keep peeling and talking away 
Now, you can peel them with your fingers or you can peel them with a knife because the skins come right off when you're um, when you put them into this cold water. You can actually peel the whole skin off practically if you wanted to. But I don't like to get stuff under my fingernails and I like to get my hands clean the whole time. So I'm, I'm going to peel them with my knife. My husband makes sure that I always have a good sharp knife. And you, if you'll notice, I'm peeling them at the back edge of the knife, not the front edge of the knife. So I've got a little more control over the knife. And this isn't a huge knife. It's my favorite paring knife. So dull knives cut people. Sharp knives don't, unless you're careless. So be careful with the knives and get all your potatoes peeled. And we're making these potatoes ahead of time so we don't have to do this the day of Thanksgiving. You know, steaming up the kitchen and getting in a hurry making things always makes it hard on us. But if we can do things, here it is, um, seven, uh, it's Wednesday, seven days out, eight days out. And I'm going to freeze these puppies and and that way, all I have to do is get them out the day before and let them thaw and put them in the container that they're going in. In fact, the container they're going in is what I'm going to freeze them in, but I'm going to put them in a bag instead because I want my, my container to be room temperature when I put the potatoes in the oven to, to finish the last little bit of baking that they do because I'm going to top them with um, a parmesan cheese mixture right on top and then I'm going to cook them until they get kind of bubbly and they're heated all the way through and it's going to make oh they everybody loves these mashed potatoes people beg me for these mashed potatoes so the, these are I'm going to have a few leftovers too so I'll have some to be able to make a meal for um, one day this week Although I don't want to wear myself out on these wonderful mashed potatoes. I only make them once a year. And I can use them for the leftovers for potato soup. And I did skip forward a little bit. <laughs> so, folks, just stay focused and, and you'll get those potatoes all done up. And next is the fun part. This is when I get to use my ricer. And I love my ricer. My friend Mary Ann, who's passed away now, when she was moving out of her house, she says, you know, I've never used this thing. Do you want it? And I said, I would love to have it. And so I, every time I make my mashed potatoes, I think of my friend Mary Ann. So here's the ricer in action. You just put it over your mixing bowl that you're going to be putting into your KitchenAid mixer. That's the mixer I like. And this is kind of like exercise. You kind of squish it together. And you just do one potato at a time. You can do it with the, with the skins on there. But I don't like to do it that way. Because I don't like to get black specks or peeling specks in my mashed potatoes. I want them to be pretty. So just keep mashing away. And before you know it, you'll have them all done. And it's just so easy. One potato at a time. And they're, they're not cold, but they're not hot either. So just keep, keep ricing the potatoes. There are other ricers that look like a cone that you can use. But this is the one that I have, and it doesn't take up a lot of room in my drawer. And it just does a great job. Here we have it. We've almost got them all done. Now, we're not going to mix this. We're not going to beat it up with the mixer very much. We're going to get it. We're going to incorporate the creamed butter, sour cream, cream cheese, and cream into this mixture very easily. But we're not going to beat it and whip it all up. You just want to get it all mixed up. And I'm trying to get the last little bit of potato out of my ricer and I'm just going to stick it in the pan and put it in my sink and by the time I get ready to clean it all up it, all the potatoes will practically be off it and I will put everything in the 
So I've already added some of the cream mixture in, into the potatoes. And we're going to run it for a little bit. This is a pretty stiff uh, mashed potato. So you kind of run it on slow and get everything incorporated. And cut it off. Wipe it, take a, a spatula and wipe down the sides. And then just get it all mixed up. Only takes about a, a minute or so to do it. Don't overbeat them. You will be so happy. Now, also into that cream mixture, you can add your salt. But you never know how much salt you're going to need because potatoes take a lot of salt to get them to the right flavor. So just keep mixing it up. I actually locked the mixer down so it wouldn't jump up on me. And... I'm going to end up stirring it all together because I forgot to put salt in it. So I'm going to add the salt. You'll see that in just, I'm adding more of the cream mixture now. And these, these potatoes freeze well because they have this cream mixture in them. Now, if, if you, I try to figure about two potatoes per person coming to dinner. That way I know I've got leftovers. I like to have leftovers. That's for certain. So I plan for the leftovers. There it was locked. We'll take the spatula and wipe down the whipping, whipping utensil and get everything out of the whipper. I don't know what it's called, but anyway, it's looking good. Now I'm going to take my spatula and just turn them over a little bit because I forgot to add the, the salt at this point. And I'm going to get my salt out and put a little, about a teaspoon of salt in it. They may need more, but I'm not going to add any more because I don't know how everybody else, your gravy's going to be salty and you're going to put some butter on it so you're going to have to just sort of, your butter is salted. So just be, don't be too generous with your salt, even though potatoes take a lot of salt, because not everybody likes to eat a lot of salt. So just keep stirring them up with your spatula, and then before you know it, you'll have everything incorporated. Now, I'm going to roll down the edge of a gallon Ziploc bag so, so as not to get mashed potatoes on the zipper. And just scoop one at a time into the Ziploc bag. If you'll notice, I've got the Ziploc bag setting in my casserole dish that I like to use for my mashed potatoes. And it goes in the oven quite well. But I'm not, not putting the mashed potatoes straight into the bowl. I'm just going to be putting them in the bag and freezing them in the bowl and then I'll take them out of the bowl and then put the bowl back in the cabinet until I'm ready to use it. It doesn't it doesn't take long to do this. And I've got I will put them in the freezer and then the day before I'm going to take them out of the freezer and put them in the refrigerator to thaw up. And you see I've got a little bit left over. And here we have it. I clean up the the peelings and put everything in the dishwasher and my kitchen is clean again. So these are some of the best mashed potatoes you are ever going to eat. Everybody raves about them. I'm just glad I got to make a video for you because people have asked me for years, how do you make those potatoes? And I finally got a video for you. They're wonderful. Have a great Thanksgiving. Yum.